Well, I want to welcome you to this five-part course on getting organized now, organizing all the different things in your life, your digital life, your financial life, personal, family, home. We're going to talk about so many tools and strategies and ideas uh, in this course that's going to last five weeks. I've got five training videos just like this one um, coming to you, and I'm really, really, really excited about it because here's what I know. I didn't used to be an organized person. In fact, some of my first jobs, um, I was a youth pastor in local churches. And if you've ever been to a church before or know a youth pastor, you know that youth pastors are not typically known for being organized. And I had stuff everywhere. And it wasn't until I had to, I kind of came face to face with the fact that I had so much going on in my life that I needed to get organized. And I used to blame this on my personality or just my ADD nature, or just all this different kind of things. But I realized that in order to be effective, I needed to get organized. And so this wasn't anything to do with my personality or my job or just how I like to work or the excuse of I know where I put it. This was about having more time um, to do the things that I needed to do and wanted to do and also being more effective in those things. And so my goal in these next five videos um, is not to just help you feel better and just know where to find stuff when you need to find it. That's not that's not a win. The win is being more effective and having more time to spend on the things that you need to spend time on. And so here's what we're going to cover uh, in this video course. There's going to be five separate videos. This is the first one, and there'll be four more. And we're going to talk in this uh, video about how to organize your digital life. And so we're going to talk about the things that happen on your computer and online and how to get a handle on all that. Then we're going to talk about how to organize your home life. And if you're single, if you're married, if you have kids, we're just going to talk about just kind of the things that happen at home when you walk in the door, what kind of happens around your house, your apartment, your flat, whatnot. Uh, then we're going to talk about finances and uh, some super, super practical stuff in this about how to get a hold on your different accounts and the finances and all the stuff um, because so much of life takes money. And then we're going to talk about how to organize your personal life. And if I can, uh, I, I probably can be biased in this. This is going to be my favorite video because I'm going to give you some tools in this that are unbelievable unbelievable to help you connect what you do on a daily and weekly basis to what you want to accomplish out of life. And so this is what I mean. This is not about like reorganizing your office or getting some, you know, putting some stuff on in the drawers. This is about making a real difference in your real life. And then in session five, um, particularly for those of you that have kids, we're going to talk about how to organize your family life and just kind of how to get, get a handle on the schedule and how to have some peace maybe at home. Because for those of us that have families, um, whether they're big or small, man, they can be they can be stressful. And so we're going to talk about all those things. Um, the first thing I want to share, though, is I want to give you some key principles. And the reason principles are, are important is because there are a million strategies that you can implement, implement, but there are only a few principles. And so many times we're out, particularly when it comes to organizing or leading or so many of the other things we do, we're looking for ideas and strategies and tools. And those things are secondary. The reality is, is there are a ton of strategies that'll work. There are a ton of tools that will work. There are a ton of different things that will help you. But there are really only a few, what I call, guiding principles. And so let me just give you three of these guiding principles. And you're going to hear these as we move throughout this entire um, course. Number one is this, is put everything in its place. Put everything in its place. I believe that everything has a place. Not too long ago, I read a book by Dr. Henry Cloud called Boundaries. And he said a boundary is simply a, a, a marker that, that describes what, what you will get or what you allow. And, you know, a fence is a boundary. And so all the things that are in your yard, they need to be in your yard and the fence is kind of there. But it's, it's not, and they're true in relationships, right? Relationships need boundaries um, to be healthy. But so does everything else. Everything in your life has a proper place. It may have two or three proper places, but there is a place for everything, whether it's a tangible thing like your keys when they come home or whether it's a relational thing. Um, one of the things um, I do jumping ahead when we, when we have our kids clean up their room, we say put everything in its home. And so stuffed animals and books and toys, they all have a home. They have a place where they live. And in your life, you're going to find incredible peace when everything has and it's put in its proper place. And so that's a principle. That's a, that's a guiding principle. Number two is this. Master a few tools. I'm going to share with you a few, few tools, uh, particularly when we come to the digital aspect of thing. But here's what I want to say to you. I want, I want to take the pressure off. I'm going to show you a tool, but you may already use a tool or somebody else may have a better tool. The, the, at, the issue at hand is not what tool you use, but how well you use it. 
And so the tool that you use every day and you're comfortable with is better than the new tool that has new buttons and new whistles and new bells and can do all this other stuff. And so I want to encourage you to master a few things and use them every day because the tools I'm going to talk to you about in this session get better as you use them more and you get better as you use them more. So don't be tempted because every day there's a new app, there's a new thing, there's a new you know, website, there's a new product that promises to make your life easier and save you time. But the tools that you use and use them well are really going to make a big difference. And then number three, organization has nothing to do with your personality. And so I want you to ban um, this from your, from your mind. If you say, I'm just not an organized person. You are an organized person. You just haven't found the right strategies and tools to help you do that. Or you thought that the point was being organized and being clean and being neat and not keeping stuff, throwing stuff away. That's not, that's not the point of organization. So I want you to stop blaming it on your job or your personality or where you work or who you're married to. Organization has nothing to do with your personality. If a youth pastor who, who um, you know, couldn't organize anything could get organized and get effective, then you can too. So those are some of the key principles I wanted to share. Now, that in the way of introduction, I want to dive right in to organizing your digital life here in this first session. And in this first session, I'm going to share with you um, really four things, four strategies, four tools that I use to organize my life because so much of it happens online, right? And if life's not happening online, you're certainly using your computer and your phone. Um, you know, we, we carry around massive supercomputers in our pockets now because we all have smartphones and so much of what we do interfaces digitally. And so um, we're, we're, we're dealing with email rather than the post office, right? We're dealing with digital things um, with so much of our time. And so I want to give you kind of four different things that I believe will make your life um, so not just easier, but better if you will use them and master them. And the first is this. The first is a tool called Evernote. Now, there are other options of this. Um, there, Microsoft has a thing like this. There's different different things you can use. But Evernote is an extremely powerful digital tool that you can use to organize everything. Evernote is like a digital filing cabinet. And so I remember when I when I uh, used to used to work in a regular office, I used to have a um, a filing cabinet where I would store files, you know, and every file would you know have a thing and it'd be be all organized and put different things in there. Evernote is simply a digital filing cabinet that can help you save or find anything that you need to find. It's an incredible tool. It's a website. It's an app. And um, it all syncs and blends together and allows you to save anything. And I have become a huge, huge fan of Evernote over the last few years. It is the tool that I use to save just about anything from my phone and my computer. So let's talk about what Evernote is. Of course, you can go to evernote.com and read this and watch videos. But it is a digital filing cabinet. That's the best way I know how to describe it. It's a digital filing cabinet where you can just keep stuff. It is a free that's what that's what's beautiful. It is a free software tool and an app. So you can go to the website. You can install it on your computer. You can install it on your uh, iPhone or your Android device. Um, it is an app. Um, you can access it from any computer in the world. You just go to Evernote.com, log in, and there's all the stuff that you've saved. So you can get it from your computer or your phone or another device or another computer. Um, you save images, texts, emails, articles documents, all kinds of things you can save in Evernote. And when you need them, you can go back and you can find them, just like you could save a uh, save stuff in your filing cabinet. Evernote, the, the powerful power, one part of the power is, is that it's searchable and shareable. And so you can save a document in there and you can head there and search for something and it'll not just search the title of the document, but inside the document. Another powerful thing is you can save stuff in folders and you can share those folders with coworkers. Um, my wife and I, we have, we have, I have a, a folder on my computer for taxes and it's shared with her. And so she can dump stuff into that folder. I can dump stuff into that folder and it's there and searchable when we need it. The more you use it, the more powerful it becomes. So, you know, the, the more notes, they're called notes when you put things in there, whether it's a article or a picture or something that you save, the more stuff you put in there, the more powerful it becomes. And that's why Evernote has become one of the most powerful digital tools I use because I use it for everything. And so here are some of the folders I have. Remember I told you that Evernote 
allows you to create folders. Just like in that filing cabinet, you could have folders and you could put stuff in the folders. And so here's some of the folders that I use. And I'm going to show you a screenshot of, of my computer setup of Evernote in just a second. Uh, but here's some of my folders. The first one, the most important one is inbox. And I put an exclamation point at the front of it so it appears at the top. And so it's, it's always at the top every time I log in. Um, on any device, inbox is at the top. And I've set inbox to be my default. So when I put something into Evernote, it goes there. And then later I can come back and put it in the right folder. So it's so quick and so easy to just put stuff. Even from my phone, I can record an audio thing and just drop it right into the inbox. And it becomes kind of the place where everything goes. And from there, I can put it in a different place later. Um, I have a folder called personal. Here in this folder, I just save all kinds of personal stuff. I mean, stuff from my kids' school stuff that they draw, art projects, uh, you know, um, pictures, all kind, just personal stuff. Um, blog ideas. I have a folder called blog ideas. So when I'm thinking of something, you know, you know how this is. A lot of times you're just out and about and you think, oh man, I should write about that. And I will write a note and I'll drop it in blog ideas. And right now I have like 200 different um, notes. And some of them are one sentence, some of them are a couple paragraphs. Um, of just things that I said, I want to write, I want to expand on that. It goes in there. And I actually write my blog post in Evernote. And so I'll, I'll go to the idea note and I'll finish it. I'll write it all out. And then when it's done, I just move it over into a folder called blog posts. And I have, you know, about 500 different blog posts that I've written that are all saved there. They're not just on my website. They're there in, in this in this Evernote folder. And those are just a few of the folders I use. Um, notes is kind of the catch-all one. And so um, I don't have a gazillion different things. Um, notes is just where everything else goes. Because remember, you can search and tag and do all kinds of stuff. So I have over a thousand notes just in notes. And these, these are things from articles to just random stuff that I, that I read and I just want to keep. Um, I have a folder for taxes. And so anytime there's something for taxes throughout the year, whether it's a statement, a receipt, or something, I, I'll just jump dump it right into the tax folder so when it's time to get all that stuff and you can either do when if you either do your taxes or send it off to your accountant boom it's right there you don't have to go through some um, box sitting on a desk somewhere which is all these receipts it's right there um, recipes I got a big green egg not too long ago this is the, it's probably one of my favorite hobbies now I got a, a big green egg smoker awesome thing and so I'll go on the internet and different people send me stuff for ribs or chicken or pork or all this different food. I love to cook on that thing. So I have a folder for, for all my big green egg recipes. Uh, I'm working on a book right now called Starting Over. Uh, I might change the name of it, but it, that's what the kind of the working title. And anytime I read an article or see something, uh, kind of my working table of contents, is kind of the hub for my research, it all goes into that folder, Starting Over. Um, I like to play the guitar. I've got a folder for guitar chords, and so I keep them all in there. I don't have to print them out. They're all right there. I can sit down at my at my desk. I get my guitar out. I open up the guitar things. I start you know start playing Freebird. Um, I have a, a folder called a swipe file. A swipe file is simply an email I get or a website I see that I'm like, man, that's a good idea. I could use that in my business or I could use that somewhere. And so I just save it in a folder called swipe file. And you know I can go to it and 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 steal some of those uh, great ideas that other people have. So those are some of the folders that I have in Evernote. So you can see when I see something, I just throw it into the inbox, and from there I'll come back and I'll file it away, just like I would file in a cat in a, a filing cabinet. Here's a screenshot of my uh, Evernote you see at the top, uh, Evernote Premium. I actually it's free, but I actually pay five dollars so I can store different uh, you know upgraded files like Word documents and PDFs and different stuff. There you see the inbox, blog ideas, blog posts, guitar chords, uh, meeting notes, personal. There's all the stuff I was sharing you about rep, uh, recipes, starting over, the swipe file. Um, that that's kind of how I have Evernote organized and it works really 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 well and it's and it's 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 my hub it's my digital filing cabinet so getting stuff in Evernote is so simple one of my favorite ways to do it is a keyboard shortcut so I'm saying I'm reading something I see a blog post I simply highlight it hit hit uh, cut and then I hit three keys and boom it automatically opens up um, control command and uh, 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 V puts it right into Evernote, makes a new note, drops it in the inbox, and it's there. I can come back to it later. Evernote gives you a unique email address. So this is this is cool too. If I want to get something from my inbox, let's say you send me an email and I want to save it. Maybe it's a swipe file email. All I do is forward it to Evernote. 
So Evernote gives me an email address. It's like Evernote dot six four six you know, some long thing. So I just save that as Evernote, like it's a person. And so I just forward it to Evernote and it just goes right into my inbox in Evernote. So I can keep it there. Um, another way I get stuff into Evernote is a scanner. And we have a scanner at our house. And so when something comes in that I need to keep, um, I put it through the scanner. One button sends it straight into Evernote. And so one of my favorite ways to use this is when my kids come home with something that they drew. And so I can scan it or you can take a picture of it as well. That would work. And I send it right into Evernote and it keeps that stuff there. Finding stuff in Evernote is also awesome because it's searchable. So you saw that I have a folder called Notes and it's just kind of the catch-all. The reason you don't have to organize everything into 10,000 different folders is because it's searchable. And it searches not just you know the title of the note, but it searches inside the document. So whether it's a PDF or a Word document, if I use a phrase in the document, it'll find it. It's very, very powerful. In fact, I'll go to a meeting sometimes. I'll consult with an organization and we'll fill up a whiteboard full of notes. I'll take a picture of that, send it to Evernote, and Evernote searches handwriting and it finds um, finds what you're looking for. So it's so easy. It's also synced. So I've got it on my computer. I've got it on my phone. I've got it on my tablet. I've got it on somebody else's computer. And so all these things, all these notes are synced across all my devices. You can search by date, by tag, by keyword, it's so easy to find stuff in Evernote. It is seriously the number one tool I use. Now, the way I learned how to use Evernote, because I've just given you the quick crash course on how powerful it is, but the way I learned to use Evernote was in this ebook by Brett Kelly called Evernote Essentials. In fact, he wrote the version one of this and Evernote hired him. And so, um, that and, and, and that's how good it is. And so he's got a great ebook that you can go on his website and download it. And he shows you how it works for your Mac. It shows how to work work it for Windows, shows you how to get stuff into it, uh, all kinds of case studies. Um, it, I mean, it's, it is a robust manual, and it does, you know, Evernote doesn't give you kind of the instruction manual. This is the ebook that you need, and so you can link to it. I'll, I'll send you the link, but also you can link to it on my website, michaelukazuski.com slash essentials will take you straight on to um, where to download this ebook, and you can get it and read it, and I got it, I read it, and I keep it in Evernote, and so get that. It's super helpful. Second tool, all right, that's Evernote. Second tool to manage your digital life. I use it every day multiple times a day is a tool called Dropbox. Dropbox is simply cloud-based storage for all of your documents. And I'm going to show you how I use Dropbox. And so it is, it, much like Evernote, it exists on your computer, but you can also get to it from your tablet, from somebody else's computer, from your phone, from all your devices. It keeps all your documents synced up. Um, also, it backs them up, and so you can't lose them because stuff's synced up. It's a really, really, really powerful tool. So what is Dropbox? It's simply a folder for all of your files. Now, I know on your computer you have a folder for all your files, but those files are stored on your computer. With Dropbox, those files are stored on your computer, but that folder also syncs with the cloud. And it's synced because it's now stored in the cloud or synced in the cloud. When you um, upload something, download something, get something from a different device, it keeps everything all in sync. And so Dropbox syncs with the cloud, so that's how you can access everything. It makes it super easy to share documents or folders. One of my pet peeves is when people try to email documents. And so maybe you're working on a document back and forth with somebody, you email, email. So if you want to share a document or a folder, or a whole bunch of stuff with somebody, all you gotta do is right click on it in Dropbox, get the link and send the link. And instead of sending the document, you are sending a link to the document and it makes it super easy. And you can access your documents anywhere from any computer or any device. It is so, so powerful. It is a also a simple backup system. Not too long ago, I, I had uh, I, I lost some stuff, but because I'd saved it in, in Dropbox or because it was synced with Dropbox, all my files, all my folders are all synced uh, with the cloud and I can get to it. And so this is how my, uh, my Dropbox folder looks on my computer. So you're looking at my desktop right now. And um, there's a couple ways I put a couple arrows up here. This little, this little icon up in the top with the Dropbox logo with the check mark, it means all my fold, it means all these files are synced with the cloud. And so I can click on that and boom, this folder pops up. Also on the left side, under my favorites, it says Dropbox. And you can see, here's all the here's all the folders that I store inside Dropbox. And so I keep everything in there, not in documents. Because if I put something in here, it syncs with Dropbox right away. And it's so easy to get. Now, I've paid for additional space. So literally all of my documents, all of them, 
are synced in Dropbox. Not just a few, not just the two or three or five gigs that they give you for free. It is absolutely worth um, paying a little bit more to get more space to store all of your documents inside of Dropbox. Uh, and again, these folders are shareable. So you can have multiple people share and sync. Um, like for work, for example, you could have a work folder and different people can access and drop stuff into that folder. So Dropbox, super, super, super powerful. All right, tool number three. Everybody uses this, email, email. Email is still the most popular way to communicate, but it doesn't have to drown you. And I've talked to so many people uh, online and in-person clients that are just drowning in email. They're just, they're just, it's just killing them. And they look at their inbox and it's like, man, it's a task. And I've seen people say, man, your inbox is like someone else's to-do list for you. Um, but if you use it, you almost have to use email um, today. And so let me talk to you a little bit about how to use digital, uh, how to use digital, you know, email, electronic mail to get a hold of that and to get control of that in your life. First of all, I want to encourage you to bring all your email into one place. So on my computer, I have one email client or program, um, and I, I use a Mac computer. I use a MacBook Air. It's my favorite computer, and it's got a program called Mail, but you may use Outlook. You may use something else, but I have all of my email addresses come into one inbox. So work, personal, I literally have about six different email addresses, but they all come into one place, and that is a thing. Remember how I shared the principle at the beginning, everything in its place? I don't want email in 10 different places. I don't want to remember, oh, I got to remember to go to Yahoo and check my Yahoo mail or Gmail and check my G Gmail and work. I didn't haven't checked my work mail, my home mail. I bring all my email into one place. Everything in its place, that's where I want all my messages to come into one inbox because when they're all there, I don't have to think about other places. They're all there. So I bring them all into one place. The other thing I do is I empty my inbox every single day. Now, some of you right now, that, that you go, man, that would take me 100 years, 100 years, because you use your inbox as a storage place, and your inbox should not be a storage place. An inbox is simply a processing place, and you can empty your inbox every day. So you might have to take a day to focus on it. You might have to delete and start over, declare amnesty, right, and, and just start over. But if you have an empty inbox... Every day, and you say, well, every day is not practical for me, Michael. You Okay, you, I can't do it. All right, every week on Friday, okay? Empty your inbox every day. Here's how to do it. Let me tell you how to keep your inbox empty every day. I want to share, you, share with you three strategies. I use these. Um, other people taught them to me. They're so helpful. The first is this, Ohio. Ohio, what in the world does a state have to do with it? You know, go Buckeyes, right? Um, no, Ohio means only handle it once, Ohio, only handle it once. So when you get an, an email, what happens is you, if, you, if you leave it in your inbox, every time you open up your inbox, you're seeing that message. You're reading it over and over and over again. You think, well, it's not that much time. It is because it's not, it's not done. And so only handle it once. So when an email comes in, when you read it, you're going to decide right then what to do with it. Okay, right then what to do with it. Either I'm going to respond, either I'm going to forward, I'm going to file, I'm going to delete it. Um, you decide right then and then you're only handling it once. If you keep it there and keep coming back and say things like, all right, I'm going to deal with that next week. No, it's cluttering up. Everything has its place. That is not the place to keep things. That is a place to process things. And so only handle every email message that you get one time. That'd be your goal. Another thing is this, is the two-minute rule. Here's, here's, uh, here's how the two-minute rule works. Um, when I get an email and when I check my email, um, if I can do whatever it is that needs to be done in that email in two minutes, I just do it right then. And you think, well, that sounds like, you know, it doesn't sound effective. Here's what I found. And other people have found this. There's been studies on this as well. That if you can do it in two minutes or less, it's way quicker to just do it and have it done and have it out of your inbox than to keep coming back to it over and over and over again because it actually builds up a uh, certain level of stress in you to have that undone thing in your inbox. And so if it requires more than two minutes, then I put it on my to-do list and I delete the email. And so it goes on my to-do list. I'll decide when I'm going to do it. I have a whole different strategy for dealing with that. But if I can do it in two minutes or less, I don't make a to-do list. I don't write it down. I just do it. It, it. And it's just done and it's deleted and it's gone. And and I think that'll help you get control over your inbox. And then the third thing is this, unsubscribe. Man, I'm telling you, unsubscribe from those lists. Now, not my list. My list you need to stay on, right? But all those other emails, uh, I'm just kidding. Actually, if my list, if being on my email list is not valuable to you, unsubscribe. I give you permission because you are too busy to j even have to get emails and delete them. Um, you are too busy for that. 
If it is not adding value to you, if you don't need it, unsubscribe from it. All those um, email, you know, when you go into the store and you buy something and you fill out something to get a discount or you have got added to the list, get off of it. There's a link at the bottom of them. If it's coming from a reputable company, those unsubscribe links are real. And so you can opt out of those things and get that stuff out of your inbox in the first place. And so those are just some tips on how to use um, email. Here's a picture of my inbox um, and it's empty. And that's how I like to see my inbox. Now, it's, it's not empty all the time. It's empty at the end of the day. And so you will feel an incredible amount of peace in your digital life if you can get a hold of your inbox and empty it every day. All right, number four, uh, I want to talk to you about how to deal with all those logins and passwords, about how to keep your information safe and organized. Now, again, remember the principle. The tool you use is better than the tool that you don't use that has more bells and whistles. So I'm going to share with you what I use, but you may have a better or more sophisticated solution, and that's fine. Pick one, use it, it's going to be awesome. I, I keep all of my personal information in an Excel file called personalinfo.xls, personal info. And so I'm talking about all the numbers in my life, all of them, logins, passwords, count numbers, everything is in one uh, password protected Microsoft Excel file. And so I keep this file file right here on my uh, desktop. You see down at the bottom, I put a, it's stored in Dropbox, okay? But I got a link to it right there on, on the bottom of my desktop right next to the trash can. And so I click on that and it pops up and it, and, and uh, in, in Excel, actually Word or any, any program really, you can create a password that's required to open it. So I have a, a good password on this. And when I open up this document, all of my, basically um, all <laughs> of my numbers and passwords and everything are in one place, everything in its place. And so all my data is right here in one place. So what do you keep on this? Here's what I keep on the spreadsheet. I have different sections. So I have a section called personal information, driver's license number, uh, license tag numbers. It's uh, it's amazing how many times I need to put my license tag number in something. I don't know my license tag number, uh, so instead of walking out and get remember, trying to remember it, I just put the numbers in there for for both my car, my wife's car, driver's license number, social security number, uh, all all kind of my personal information um, goes goes in in there in a section. Another thing is I have a section for financial information, bank account numbers, credit card numbers, even closed bank account numbers are there. Um, logins, passwords. All that stuff. So it'll say like Wells Fargo, account number, um, online ID, password, PIN number, mailing address, all that stuff for everything, for every card um, is, is right there in that thing. Um, online accounts, trading accounts, anything that has to do with money, our mint.com login and password, all of that stuff is right there in that section, financial information. Uh, another thing is website logins and passwords. All right, how many times have you gone to a website? We do this all the time. We try a couple names and passwords can't remember and then just have to do the forgot password, right? We click on that, forgot password, forgot ID. We have to go through this whole long process. And so anytime I create an account at a website, um, Expedia.com for travel or you know any website, right? I, I create a login, a password, and I update that one document and boom, it's right there. I'm not going to forget it. Um, travel, I've got all my travel, my hotel rewards numbers, my my flight uh, Sky Miles numbers and different all the all the travel stuff Hertz rental card numbers are all there. I don't I don't carry those cards around, but I have this information with me at all time because it's right here in this personal information. I have um, a tab for myself. I have a tab for my business. Same thing for business. I have all the business account numbers, tax, federal tax ID number, um, all the different numbers. Same kind of stuff, but for my business. I have a third one for my kids. Right as my kids get older, guess what? They're creating accounts or I'm creating accounts for them online for different websites. My kids um, have, a, have, a, have a Gmail address. And so I've, I'm keeping all that because you know they're not going to remember it and I don't want them writing it down either. So I keep all that stuff. So three tabs, personal, business, kids, all the information right there in one spreadsheet. And that's how I keep all this organized. Now, you may say there, you want a more sophisticated solution. So here's five different um, apps or websites or services you can use. Uh, you can Google all of these, LastPass, Dashlane, OnePassword, Splash ID, KeePass. All of these are tools that you can use. So if, you're not, if you don't want to use the Excel spreadsheet, if you want to use something more sophisticated because you're more hip than I am, totally fine. Pick one. There are... And, and, and begin to use it and put all your stuff in there. So you might have to take you know an hour or two hours to get all your information in there safe and secure, and it's going to save you time, and you're going to feel amazing when it's done. 
And so those are four different things to organize your digital life. We talked about Evernote, digital filing cabinet. We talked about Dropbox, where all of your digital files can go. Um, we talked about um, how to get a hold of email and deal with email and kind of store that and save that and process that. And then we talked about organizing all those pesky passwords and, and usernames. Obviously, there's much more to your life online, but those are kind of the four most important things I feel like you could get a handle on, and it'll make your digital life um, not just easier, right? It's not just about finding stuff when, when you need it, but it's about being more productive and not wasting time so you can take that time and use it on other things. I'm really excited about the rest of the videos in this series. We're going to get into home. We're going to get into your personal life, how to connect your, your personal life to really what you want to be and what your goals are. Um, we'll talk about family. We're going to talk about family finances, so many more things coming up in the future weeks. But your homework is to process some of these stuff. Get set up for Dropbox. Get set up um, for Evernote and begin to bring all this stuff into one place. It sounds like a lot of work, but I'm telling you, once you get it set up, you will reach the benef reap the benefits over and over and over again, and you'll be far more effective and far more organized uh, in your life, especially your digital life. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to journey with you through the rest of this course. Um, thanks so much. And if you've got any questions, please, please, please let me know.